right, what we're gonna do in this problem is take a look at a first class lever and go through and calculate several different things for this lever in several different arrangements. Uh, so the first thing I wanna do is, is look at this lever as though this is a perfectly efficient lever. Uh, it is 100% efficient. And if this lever is 100% efficient, I wanna go through and calculate two different things. The first thing I wanna solve for is the IMA or the ideal mechanical advantage of the lever. Additionally, I want to go through and solve for the magnitude of the output force of this lever. Knowing the ideal mechanical advantage, that's kind of cute and interesting, but if we actually knew the output force on this lever, that would be something extremely useful as an engineer. Uh, so, go through and solve for both of these things. So, let's start by solving for the ideal mechanical advantage of this lever. Now, you remember, ideal mechanical advantage is given by the equation d in over d out. Uh, and now we saw in a previous video about levers up here, that this for a lever and when applied to a lever can reduce down to the length of the input side over the length of the output side. So solving for the ideal mechanical advantage in this problem is actually pretty straightforward. Uh, we find that the IMA and the ideal mechanical advantage is the length of the lever on the input side, that is two feet, over the length on the output side, that is five feet, which works out to be 0 0.4. Now this has no units because it's feet over feet. This is really just a ratio of lengths over lengths. Now this is a cute number and all, but it doesn't really tell us what this lever is doing or, or what this lever can accomplish. The real important thing we wanna to get to here is the output force. So in order to solve for the output force, we're gonna to have to not just take a look at IMA, we're also gonna to have to take a look at the percent efficiency and the actual mechanical advantage. Remember, actual mechanical advantage, or AMA, is given by F out over F in. That is the output force divided by the input force is actual mechanical advantage. Uh, now this would be useful for us at the moment if we knew the actual mechanical advantage of the system. So we need one more equation in order to determine the actual mechanical advantage of the system. And that e equation relates AMA to IMA. You'll remember percent efficiency is equal to AMA over IMA. Now in this problem, we're going through and saying that this lever is 100% efficient. So if I wanna go through and calculate for the AMA, knowing the IMA, simply a matter of plugging in my values. Now we gotta be careful here because when we calculate percent efficiency, we need to plug in this percent as a decimal. So this is gonna be 1.00, that's 100% is equal to the actual mechanical advantage over our ideal mechanical advantage, which we solved for up here. This was 0.4, well, we're just gonna plug that in here for IMA. And we find that the actual mechanical advantage is 0.4. Uh, so, if AMA equals 0.4, that is the force out divided by our force in. Now realize there's a 60 pound load or 60 pounds of force acting on the input side of this lever. So, this value right here is gonna be 60. And we find that the output force, that is the force that results from this 60 pounds of effort acting on the lever is 24 pounds. This is an extremely useful value. Now I wanna look at this in a slightly different way. I'm gonna look at the same lever with the same arrangement, except now let's go through and say that this lever isn't 100% efficient. Let's instead say the lever is only 90% efficient. And let's again go through and solve for the IMA and the output force. Well, IMA, just like before, is using this equation. The ideal mechanical advantage is equal to, for a lever, the length of the input side divided by the length of the output side. In this case, it's gonna be the same. We haven't changed this at all. By making this inefficient, we haven't changed the geometry of the lever itself. 
So the IMA is still gonna be two feet over five feet. And that's 0.4. Now, what is gonna change in this problem is the actual mechanical advantage. Um, we still know actual mechanical advantage still follows this equation, F out over F in, that never changes. Uh, the issue is our percent efficiency has changed. Uh, we still have percent efficiency is actual mechanical advantage over ideal mechanical advantage. The catch is this time around, because this is 90% efficient, we can have 0.9 equals AMA over 0.4. Now, where'd the 0.9 come from? Well, that's 90% expressed as a decimal. Now, you might ask, what is going to make the lever less efficient? Well, largely, it would be something like friction right around the fulcrum here. Uh, or any sort of drag on this lever. Any outside forces that are gonna take energy away from the system so that it doesn't get transferred through to the output side of the, the lever. And typically we'll see that is in fact friction acting at, in this case, the fulcrum. So if this is only 90% efficient, what we're gonna find in this case is that the actual mechanical advantage is 0.36. 0.36 being the force out over a force in, which we know is 60 pounds. Well, if we go through and now we solve for a new output force, we're gonna find that in a situation where the lever is only 90% efficient, 21.6 pounds on the output side. So in the situation where this was 100% efficient, uh, we got 24 pounds out. If it's less efficient, we get less force out, only 21.6. So let's change this up a little bit and uh, do yet a different version of this problem. We're still gonna have the same lever with the same input, but let's say we went through and we measured the output force in a lab. And we found that that output force was only equal to 15 pounds. If we put 60 pounds into the system and we're only getting 15 pounds out, I wanna look at the percent efficiency and solve for that in this problem. So again, we're going to need IMA. Uh, spoiler alert, because the geometry of this lever has not changed, it's still going to be 0.4. That hasn't varied in any of these situations. As long as I'm dealing with this lever, that's never going to change. If I start changing the input and output lengths, then it will. But we haven't changed that. So this is still 0.4. The actual mechanical advantage being F out over F in, because we know both of these now, we've got 15 pounds out over 60 pounds in. Well, that's gonna be an actual mechanical advantage of 0.25. So we have an IMA and an AMA and we're solving for percent efficiency. Now remember percent efficiency as we've seen here and here, is actual mechanical advantage over ideal mechanical advantage. That's gonna be 0.25 over 0.4. And the percent efficiency in this situation is 62.5%. So what we've done here is we've taken a single lever or a single setup on a lever and looked at it in three different ways. We've looked at it when it's 100% efficient. We've looked at it when it loses some energy to friction and therefore it's only 90% efficient. And then over here, we've actually solved for the percent efficiency given an input and output force. So in this problem, we've managed to see how the ideal mechanical advantage and the actual mechanical advantage along with percent efficiencies can be tied together in order to solve for just about any situation that we may be faced with when dealing with a lever. Now realize, these types of solutions apply not only to first class levers, but also second and third class levers. There's nothing specific about these equations or methods that only apply to first class levers. So on that note, that's all for now.